All right, guys, welcome back for this new video where we are going to talk about the block package. So I know you've seen a lot of different videos of my channel already using the block, and I hope it was not too hard for you to understand. So I wanted to really create this quick video where it's just going to be me talking uh, for a few minutes and try to explain to you in real big details how the block package work. You might have seen the qubit kind of, of, of stuff popping around in the documentation. And so I really want to make it clear for you guys. If you have any questions, suggestions, please drop them down in the comment section. I'll be answering everyone. And uh, don't forget to subscribe as well. Uh, helps me out a lot to, uh, to subscribe if you want to, to see more of this type of content. So let's jump right into it. So the block package stands for business logic component. All right. And it's really interesting because in the name itself, you have the core principle of what the block is all about. The block is all about having a well structured app and a well structured code, right? So having the UI code in a different place as the logic code, in a different place as the backend code, and really make all that talk in between each other in order for your app to work great, to have great performances, but as well being really understandable by the team that is working on it. So I've highlighted right here the different layers that you would have if you create a new app. You have the UI layer, which is the front end of your app, for instance, a login screen, okay? You have the logic layer, so let's say when you press the login button on this login screen, the logic itself that's going to say, right, so I need to request from the database to see if I can log in this user. So this is the logic layer. It's where you're going to deal with the user input, dispatch the call, uh, the calls to the different backend services, API that you're using. And then you have the last layer, which is the backend layer where you store all your data, for instance, the user data. So those three layers are very important and you don't want to have the front end code in the same place as the logic code in the same place as the back end code. First, for security reasons, it's not great. But second, and the most important is in terms of like making your app and your code clear to understand for yourself, because if you code something today and you come back to it in six months and everything is embedded together, you're going to have a hard time understanding what the, what the hell you were trying to do there. And later on, if you have some aspiration to like bring in a team to work with you on your, on your wonderful project, I'm sure, or join a bigger team to work uh, for a company, you'd see that all of those kind of layers, they are really well defined and structures because you don't want the front end developers to deal with the back end developers. And it's really not something that is made for a good collaboration between people. So the block or the qubit. You might have seen the qubit pop in the documentation and wondering what the hell is this? Well, to make it simple, a block is event driven and a qubit is not event driven. Okay. I'm going to come back to this in later slide and you'll see it's very easy to understand. And the second important difference that you have is a block will give you a stream of state asynchronous with this little uh, asterisk at the top. It means it's a stream. Okay. And a qubit can be synchronous or asynchronous, but in terms of future. Side note, you have two types of asynchronous, right? The future or the stream. The future is a picture at one moment of, for instance, your user data. And the stream will be triggered every time that your user data changes. Okay. You can see, for instance, if you let the water running, okay, you open the water tap and you let it run. That's a stream because the water continues to flow all the time. Okay. And you have a little agent that if there is a changes in the flow of the water will trigger your app and say, okay, there is a changes in the water, in the user data. Uh, here is the new data. The future is really you open the tap water, you close it and some water went down uh, for a few seconds and now it's closed. And until you really ask for it again to be open and close again, you won't have new data. You won't have your user data actualized. OK, so that's really what's happening and the difference between the two. So let me really jump right into you have this kind of, of scheme in the block documentation for the block. And I went ahead and created a more full one, which I think makes a bit more sense. So you start at the bottom left, okay, with the UI, you get an event from the user, the user click on the login button, okay, the event will be transferred to the block, 
the block is going to tell, okay, I have a, a, a login requested type of event. And now I need to ask my database to uh, see if I can use those credentials that were passed onto the event to login this user. And if uh, it's okay, I get a good response from my database. I can emit a state that is login successful, right? And if there is a problem, I emit a state of login failure, for instance, okay? So that's really how the block works. You have an event from the UI, okay, from the user. The block deal with it, it emits at first, like let's say a loading, loading, load, uh, like, uh, like sign in uh, uh, loading, okay? So you have a circular progress indicator inside your app. In the meantime, it asks the database, can I log in this user with this credential? And if the database response is yes, you'll have, well, login success as a state or login failure as a state that will in the UI be shown as if it's success well, I redirect you to the home screen. And if it's failure, I pop some error message and tells you, right, so you made an error, uh, please try again. So that's how the block works. Now, what is for the qubit? Okay, it's a little bit different and you'd see why. So same scheme that you have on the documentation and I went ahead and again, made it a little bit more complete right here. So you'd see that the event is a dotted line right now. The arrow on the, uh, above the event is a dotted line because the qubit doesn't need an event to be triggered. When we have our example of the login, okay? For instance, you have a physical okay, action made by the user of clicking the button. That's really a, a big event from the user and you would want to use a block in these circumstances. You don't want to use a qubit. But let's say once the user is logged in, you redirect the user to the home screen and you load a list of posts. There is no user interaction right there. The app just needs to load all of those posts by itself, okay, without the interaction of the user. So you might want to use a qubit there because the qubit will just be triggered directly, okay? You don't need to ask for the event to go to the block and the whole process, okay? And you want to do that if you are just expecting a future, okay? Because remember, a qubit can be either a future or synchronous, but it cannot be a stream, okay? If you're looking for a stream of data, you can't use a block. But if you're just looking for a future, which you are all of the time, most of the time, I'd say, uh, uh, that's something that you might want to do, right? So perhaps the UI is on the home screen, you request the post, the qubit is going to be just a function, right? A qubit like fetch post, okay? Going to talk to the backend and emit a state to the app, but it's just going to stop right there. You're not going to have a really big follow-up on the life of the qubit because it doesn't really have a life. You just trigger one of the qubit function, it does it things with the backend and gives you a state and that's it. You don't have a, a stream of state and that's a one-time uh, uh, thing. So if you want new stuff, you pull down and, and, you, uh, and you refresh the page and perhaps the qubit will be triggered again. What do I prefer? That's the next slide. Which one then? Which one do you want to use? Well, I prefer block because even though sometimes in your app you won't have, and actually that's most of the time, right? Uh, user interaction to trigger some events. I find the block more clear. It, you have a better understanding of how your app is working. You can make a better app structure because if you're switching between qubit blocks and all this, at some point, if your app gets bigger, uh, that's going to be a bit of a headache because the, the let's say the, the way that you have to, to, to write a qubit is different than the way to write a block, right? So then you really want to have standards and I prefer it. And as well, you have a knowledge at all time of your app state and app events, okay? So even if the event is not user triggered, it's still an event, right? If fetch post, it's still an event, right? So I want to have this uh, follow-up on what my app is, in what state my app is at all time. And I, I personally uh, uh, enjoy block more. So then it's really a matter of, do you want to utilize 100% of the, of the uh, Flutter block package or the block is just uh, something that you can use uh, on its own and, and you'll be very happy with it and you can create wonderful apps with it. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys, for, uh, for this video. Again, if you have any questions, because I know it was a bit fast and it's a big thing, the block, okay, and it's a lot to understand and to get your heads around. So 
use the comment section. I will be answering to everyone. And uh, again, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, a lot more is coming and uh, I hope you're, uh, you'll enjoy it. Well, for now, have a great day and good luck in your uh, learning process. Bye.